AMD sprung 13 leaks. 1804's gone into beta. Amarok is still around. And building your own UPS for fun and profit. That sounds shocking. But don't <laughs> let that get you down, ladies and gentlemen, because it's another great day for Linux. Let's go. And welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just kind of talk about some of the things that we find interesting going on in Penguin Land. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by the man on the island, that is one Pedro Mateus. Hello. How's it going, man? You doing good? Is everything calmed down yeah. over there? Has any more oh, yes. uh, double agents disappeared or anything lately? Uh... Not that it's been in the news lately. Uh, today was actually a very quiet day at the office, so I got Crouton working on the uh, the Chromebook. Your tax which, dollars uh, at work. <laughs> As I said, it was a quiet day at work. So, yeah, no, I got uh, Crouton working, and it was surprisingly easy. Good job to the Crouton developers. Uh, it's literally, you just run the command. They have the little how-to in their uh, GitHub. Good job. Hmm. good deal not much to report other yeah. than um we had a bit of a time change because we yes in north america's did the time change britannia has not so it's that rare like two weeks where we're one hour mm -hmm. closer can you feel it mm, sexy <laughs> yeah and um that that hasn't really screwed with me other than like wait a minute what do you mean it's already four o'clock this is expletive deleted mm -hmm. and uh that has definitely happened more than once, but I'm not the only one screaming obscenities this week. Nay, Linus had something oh, no. to say about a little, little post that got released yesterday. I think it was yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was uh, the 13th. You may have seen it. It was all over the place. It was about AMD springing like 13 different exploits conveniently on March 13th. Yes, it was all a little too perfect. And, uh, well, Linus said that uh, it looks like IT security world has hit a new low. And this is basically due to the fact that the people who discovered the flaw decided, you know, 24 hours is enough. So let's just release the thing, and a couple hours later, a 35-page or 32-page long um, little uh, opinion post showed up on a certain website, and it's like, oh, this looks like it was planned. And I remember when this broke, I was actually in Discord with our Theron, and we were kind of going backwards and forwards on the whole thing, and it's like, oh, okay, so they were deliberately trying to find bugs to bring down AMD stock prices. And that seems to be like the consensus right now. So yeah, it's uh we'll have to wait and see what AMD says officially because they said that, oh yeah, we got the notification. We're looking into it, but we don't have anything to report right now. So we're waiting. Yeah, I, I don't exactly, when I first saw it and cursory glance, I'm like, oh look, there's a white paper. <laughs> put that on my um, stuff to do list today, made a post on Twitter. And I was like, Oh look, um, AMD's finally achieved feature parody with Intel. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, Vulnerability is all over. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. Then I saw um, shroud over at PC parody. He's like, Oh, what's this? Cause somebody like another article had dropped way too quick to be written. Mm -hmm. And about like, Oh, you should not invest in AMD and all this. Like, oh, okay. That's suspicious. Then, Dusted off the tinfoil hat, put it on my brain organ. It's like, we're just going to sit back and wait. Then this just started to unfold. And yeah, Linus, he, Linus just straight up, he's like, it looks a lot more like stop manipulation than uh, security advisory, which I kind of yep. agree with, man. I do think that's been the general takeaway. AMD did end up a tick higher than it started, so it didn't do that. Now, I know a lot of people, especially in our delusion, AKA or AMD, <laughs> they, they've got to come around. But initially, it was like, this is Intel. And rightfully, rightfully so to believe that, Pedro, because Intel's done yeah. some shady stuff to AMD. We all remember how. Got yeah, sued over we it. All remember lost. Lost. And because, I mean, they've just done some stuff like that. Go look it up. But Intel said, uh, Intel is like, hey, man, we, we don't have any involvement in the CTS Lab Security Advisory. Mm -hmm. The 24-hour straight bird culture. Look that up if you don't know what type of move that is. <laughs> um, this doesn't look like anything that can't be fixed 
with a BIOS patch and they're saying, hey, man, yeah. you, you need a custom BIOS, physical access, signed certificates. That falls under the uh, give me a room 10 minutes and a wrench. Uh, uh-huh. Because, yeah, for the big one, you would need to load a compromised uh, firmware file onto your UEFI. So that right there just sets up all the red flags. And then you would need uh, administrative rights or root access to trigger any of the other vulnerabilities. So, yeah, mm-hmm. it's a non-story, really. <laughs> I just don't think it's going to be an issue. So, uh I don't know. Be suspicious. Whatever this company is, mm-hmm. those people better be in hiding because don't lie to the internet. <laughs> Just <laughs> don't. That, that was, it was a bad a little idea. too perfect. Mm-hmm. Nice little looking website. Well, did you, very okay. Well did you see that video. breakdown? Like all of their um, promo video, uh, their oh, web yeah, zone. All the backgrounds were stock images. Yeah, shutter yeah. stock and <laughs> it just registered the like AMD flaws or whatever their web zone was. Uh, just, Last month, yeah, yeah, just, just no. All right, something smelled. Maybe the Ryzen 2000 series are really that much of a threat. That's what we got to take away from it. But who knows? I, I forget which week it is. Depending, we might be Intel shills this week. I don't know. Could be Bionic Beavers, man. It is just as kinky as advertised. 1804 Beta yep. One is out. Uh, the Beaver told the rep. Ooh, okay, I'm not touching that. The first Beta <laughs> of the Bionic Beaver to become 1804 has now been released and it's available for download. This comes in several spins, flavors, Kumbuntu, Kumbuntu, Kumbuntu Budgie. I, want, I, I keep wanting to say Kyla, but I read my brain reads it as Krillin, and I think Krill owned, and that should be the new name. Kumbuntu Mate and Zumbuntu, man. Yes. And as usual, uh, the uh, official flavor is going to skip the first round of betas like they're off to do. And when the beta 2 comes out uh, around, it's usually around the end of March, uh, they will have a uh, a beta for people to try out if they're feeling brave enough. It's Ubuntu, it's just as it's just going to work. But there's always a chance that it might blow up your box in new and interesting ways. Uh, I did try 1804 uh, beta. Mm-hmm. It works really well. It's uh, it's actually really good to see uh, the DRI three performance improvements in games. Dirt Rally uh, actually r- uh, rose up in the FERPS count, uh, playing it on very low instead of the usual sixty five ish FERPS. Uh, it went up to 72, 73, 72, 73, right around there. So that was pretty good. That was good to see. And yeah, it's. Uh, it's a new LTS beta, so if you are one of those people that likes to stick to the LTSs, this is the one to look out for. <laughs> I got I got to ask you a question, man. Uh, we we got to okay. have some real talk. Okay. Okay. It's 2018, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Why are they enforcing the misguided idea that you need six spins just to install a different desktop? <laughs> It's uh, it's more about the out-of-the-box experience, I guess, uh, because if you really like that one uh, desktop I, environment... I think maybe you need to tap the brakes, because if you, if you are technically competent enough to download and install your own operating system... I mean, there used to be a point in time where that was true. Nowadays, stuff like Rufus, if you're a Windows user, uh, Unit Bootin, if you're on Windows, Mac, uh, Linux already, whatever the case may be, uh, those tools make everything... Etcher. Etcher is a pretty good example. Those tools make everything really, really easy to just load your own um, distro spin, whatever that may be, into a flash drive. Mm -hmm. And spin it up on your box uh chances are your laptop is going to tell you oh yeah if you want to go to the one-time boot menu hit f12 or f9 or whatever the the, the key might be it's uh it's really not that hard anymore so if you are really keen on kde if you're really keen on xfc whatever the case and you just want to have that particular desktop environment pre-configured out of the box yeah, you want to flavors the different. Uh, okay, the again, that I don't want sense. to spend too much time on this, but you, yeah. Okay, my my first thought was okay, maybe you couldn't cram all that into single layer DVD. What's that? Four point five gigs. Um, four point seven. 
4.7. Okay, maybe that wouldn't yeah. fit there, but it's like, what's that going to affect? Three, possibly six people <laughs> who still burn to optical media. Uh, just pack everything on there. It's like, which experience would you like? And mm -hmm. I don't know. I was just curious. I thought may, may, if you have, like, here's the reason you big stupid oaf, uh, send us some feedback for next week. Um, a thinner, lighter, faster um, operating system for Linux has released a redesign for their software. Oh, so. yes. It's uh, Solus, uh, our favorite punching bag of an operating system. Well, we basically like to uh, pick on Ike because of those XML2 uh, benchmarks, what he did a while back. But this is the uh, Solus Software Center. And the Solus Software Center, it's similar to what you've seen in distros in the past. It's a thing that's there, but if you know the command line uh, stuff you don't really use it but they're doing some improvements to try and get people to use it uh, especially the people who already sort of kind of know what they're doing and the biggest one for me was the uh, the queue there's a little queue that you can set if even if it's installing something even if it's already doing something with the uh, actual package manager itself it doesn't stop you from queuing up other things like other uh software centers tap deals usually do and that's very good to see it it is apparently coming in the not too distant future well and that's good so i think that's just... something that people would be familiar with like so you're doing android updates you're installing multiple yep. android applications you can just have everything stacked instead of waiting mm -hmm. one at a time um mm -hmm. <laughs> another big thing i saw was responsive ui which is nice, uh, and those stacked operations, that's neat, dynamic backend support to that, I'm just going to say giggity. And um, <laughs> it it's good to see how far this has come along. And just, just, just good on that, because one thing I don't like, well, first of all, I have no illusions. I do not use the software center Ubuntu. I mean, that thing gets opened by accident on occasion, followed by me going, what is this? Why is this take that thing? No, close it quickly. <laughs> think about it. Like, uh, I'll tell you a good example is Plex installing Plex and mm -hmm. getting the Debian file and just right clicking. And of course, it's the first install with um, mm -hmm. the software center to which I immediately go, Why are you taking so long to install this? When I could, I could, yep, I, I could have walked upstairs, SSH'd into the box, typed in dpackage i, start out whatever that dev was and been done with it in two seconds. I don't know. I've never understood it, but I'm glad to see that. And oh, there's one thing, man, I think maybe we're going to see if we can get the punching bag on Britain's get talent this year. I think that'll, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think that'll be fun. So that was a great idea. Now let's go to something that I personally believe is unadulterated nightmare fuel and should not, 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 not exist, but some people are going to dig it really going to dig it hard. And that's GTK global menus, man. Yep, and uh, it's GTK Global Menus working on KDE, so it's d double the nope. Uh, yeah, if it, if you like the um, OSX style layout of the desktop, chances are you've probably looked at stuff like Global Menu, Top Menu, something like that. And you may, if you ended up on KDE, uh, you may have noticed that some GTK apps or 90% of them, didn't spawn a menu, a proper menu, at the top. Chrome was one of the exceptions. Uh, so, what's his name again? Uh, Kai Yu? You've? Something like that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I butchered your name. Uh, he, uh, he got the GTK applications to actually work with the uh, global menu in Plasma 5.10, which is amazing. Uh, and, yeah, if you are... Um, Looking forward to having that OSX style layout with a dock at the bottom or wherever with the one panel on top that has all the menus. So it technically, I guess, saves you that much uh, height since vertical real estate is still, uh, it still comes at a premium when you have widescreen monitors. We don't live in the age of 4x3 anymore. So I guess it makes sense to some degree. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I tried. I did. <laughs> I, I mean, you're probably going to get an Oscar for that, but um, no, it doesn't. <laughs> 
I, I mean, if you like global That's menus, she had. if you like global menus, you are a malfunctioning human being. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> hey, maybe you do. That was like one of the things when like Unity first started coming across, and this is before it was in repos, and you had to build it for from mm -hmm. sauces was like back in what twelve oh whatever, and. It's like, oh, this looks neat. I was like, oh, I want to try it. Then I saw global menus. And I was like, let's, well, how do we uninstall all this crap? Uh, I know I joke around about things both angering and confusing me. I, it's no joke. Global menus, just, my brain doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that on a Mac. It didn't work like that on Unity. I, I think GNOME is a bit like that with it because I had to use GNOME 3 to, because I really bork the system. You know, I'm having mm -hmm. a bad day when I'm in GNOME 3, and that thing almost gave me PTSD trying to figure out just what was going on, man. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, you do need to install some extra bits for LibreOffice, GIMP, and Inkscape. But yep. I guess here's what I'm saying. If you just have one monitor, I could see it making sense. Or if you had limited space, because yeah. I fully realize I'm. you can't see the other four massive widescreen monitors around me right now. And... I'm making use of all of them. So I don't know. Or a laptop, I guess laptop would be uh Yeah, if you are uh stuck on that laptop with a single screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. But let, let let's say global menus made you hit yourself a little bit. But what if you really <laughs> truly have nothing but seething rage for yourself, Paige? Or do you do do we have a <laughs> uh, a way to go about doing that? Uh, uh, I guess uh, our best way to go about that is to ask Strider or maybe uh, talk about something that he will probably most likely enjoy. This is Halm. And it's, uh, as described, a lightweight tiling X11 window manager that mimics VI by offering operators, motions, and modes. And, well, if the phrase a tiling X11 window manager that mimics VI doesn't have you running for the hills... It should, because tiling window managers require a, a certain mindset. It, it requires a, a special person to be able to... Of course it's in just... the R already. Of course it is. Why do you even... <laughs> of why, course why, why it even, is. Why is that even there? <laughs> he was using Arch to uh, get those GIFs at the top of the page. So, yeah, of course it is. Uh, but it is... Um, well, it's a tiling window manager that has some advanced functionality, uh, I guess. I'm, I don't really use uh, tiling window managers, but this one is there. It's a lightweight if... X11 tiling window manager that behaves like Vim. I mean, that's one of those <laughs> things that if it does what it says on the tin, you know what you're getting into. I don't think anyone's accidentally installed this and went, what's this? Uh what did you do with my desktop? No. I mean, something like this, I immediately say to myself, you know, XKCD963, if you don't know about quality of life versus last time I had mm -hmm. to open Xorg config. Um, I do going to say, you know, sorry, sorry, kids, our boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm old and like even more frightening. <laughs> I'm busy. I got to get stuff done these days. So like my days of futzing with like desktop configuration files, like died after after step. And I thought about that. This is what I put in the notes. Go check our show notes. If you want all the fun mm -hmm. stuff after the fact, let it I did try to get one E 13 enlightenment, you know, after the, yeah, we were waiting on heat death of universe, but that finally rolled out. <laughs> well, I'm going to make this usable. Cause I've been waiting my entire life for this release. It almost <laughs> only slightly exaggerating. Then it was like, ah, oh, you got to modify the desktop. I was like, nope, nope. That, like a decade ago, could have done that. Can't do that anymore. So, uh, yeah. If I'm going to be stuck futzing with config files and basically having to set the session up mm -hmm. uh, myself, uh, open box XFC for panel and compass. Uh, not not compass, Compton. Because, yeah, lightweight, all the things. <laughs> Done. I was going to, I ran out of time. I was going to give like a very serious, dry, point by point logical breakdown of why this is a good idea followed by but it falls flat because i was unable to find wobbly windows and <laughs> yeah no wobbly windows yeah sorry it's like nope <laughs> gotta give it a don't recommend on that um 
Vim's old, but another blast from the past is Emmerock and 2.90. Um, ooh, high hibern, hibern gallium? Hibernaculum. Hibernaculum. Wow, mm-hmm. okay. Don't say that like three times fast. <laughs> it's out. There's not a whole lot to it, but I mean, what's it about? I mean, Emmerock, if you don't know, is like one of the granddaddies, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the oldest uh, surviving music players, just dedicated music players. And, you know, I've always used it as more of a podcatcher from way back in the day when these podcasts were like the new hotness, the new fancy thing. But these latest versions, like roughly 20 plus bug fixes and uh, 18 from 18 contributors. I want to give everyone credit for that. This doesn't roll out the QT5 goodness that is currently no. still being worked on. You can find the active development of that, if that's your thing, in the KF5 branch. It's not in this. Um, I, I didn't see anything massive with um, the transcoding AAC format. And yeah, okay. I'm just going to be honest. I have not used Amarok. Uh, how long have tablets been out and reasonably affordable? Mm. Uh, five years six years five years now yeah Yeah. that's about how long it's been since i've used a desktop podcatcher i know i used to use what g potter then i used emerald so that was definitely a thing yeah uh emerald is definitely one of the granddaddies of um (laughs) yeah Nori just looks so much better than I do. But yeah (laughs) it's uh it's one of the granddaddies of um dedicated audio players can do your pot catching it can do the music playing it's got like uh lyrics uh it syncs the lyrics as the music is going on it's got all of that functionality and one mm-hmm. of the things that they fixed with the latest version uh we had frezzo a while back uh on the show music brains. and music brains yes uh previously if you tried to add uh music brains to amarok it would cause it to crash not anymore, they fixed it. But uh, like Ven already mentioned, uh, QT5 is going to be uh, coming a bit later. Uh, they've basically baked the KDE Libs 4 and QT4 stuff with this release, mm-hmm. but they already have a Git version that you can download, build yourself, try it out if you want to with QT5. So that's the thing. What's all the, you're KDE curious. So what's all the rigmarole, yes. the new hotness with QT5? Why would I even think about doing that? Uh, it's improved functionality mostly and support for newer APIs like, say, Vulkan. Uh, let's say you want to have a completely Vulkan rendered uh, desktop environment. Mm-hmm. QT5 lets you do that. Uh, it uh, also has better SDL support. It has a bunch of new uh, functionality introduced with the basic framework and KDE as a desktop environment kind of relies on QT to handle all of the low level framework stuff so yeah it's qd5 in itself is fine it's kde5 that i have an issue with it's still a junky janky piss uh can't say that word here uh <laughs> mess i'm Let's just saying if mess. i was an umpire I, I would probably call that a strike man um <laughs> i don't think you checked your say on that one i didn't say it <laughs> well since we're all um full of retro goodness riding our linux fixies drinking our linux flavored pbr let's go ahead and talk about our yearly update of pigeon it is out version yes. 213 not released uh the 8th of this month not a whole lot whole lot to report on this um pigeon's still a thing you don't know about it uh, i think like trillium was back in the day it's the multi protocol anything you throw at it chances are it's going to work discord irc xmmp uh yeah if it doesn't work out of the box there's a plugin for it yeah can uh no i mean i've tried it especially uh, we i know we've talked about it on the show uh, this mm-hmm. is again Almost completely just bug fixes, which is good. We're not complaining here. Uh, Don't fix what's not broke. Uh, IRC fixes, XMPP fixes, uh, the purple updates, and um, a theme, dark theme issue was sorted. But I I tried to use this. I went, I used Pigeon from back before. What what was that game originally? I think Uh, it was game. Game or game, something like that. Game. Um, Yeah. Since way back in those days, but you know, it, just, it just doesn't make sense anymore. But I tried to use it for Hangouts when they got rid of Hangouts with Google Plus and 
That was the most yeah. roundabout way of like hacking it. You know, <laughs> when you're in developer options in Chrome as part of the instructions, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it kind of sort of worked. But you know, I know people, it still works with Discord. Join our Discord channel, shameless plug. And Good. And it uh, this one surprised me because uh, I have the the uh, ThinkPad X two thirty, which is technically my work laptop. So I I thought to myself, you know what? Instead of having to use Skype for business over the Windows ten VM, let's um, let's try and get it running natively on the Linuxes. And lo and behold, there was a plugin for GIMP. Uh, P- uh, Gimp, no, Pigeon, Pigeon Sipe, uh, and it uh, it gives you the uh, audio and video configurations. It gives you the Office Communicator protocol that you can just uh, set the user agent correctly, and uh, Office three six five will go. Oh no, that's totally scab for business, you guys, and you can just make video and audio calls through it. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> Good. It's still kicking, and I, I know some people still swear by it, man. Uh... Mm-hmm. I say that's great. Again, this is part of my Googlefication because of <laughs> one of the seven tablets in this house, they are all logged into all the accounts with and everything basically just goes through Hangouts these days. Okay. Um, yep. We like building stuff and we like open software. We also and like someone decided to take that to the extreme. Open hardware. <laughs> I, I saw this on Slashdot. Yes, I'm one of the four people. Hey, man, I have a three-digit UI, UID, man. <laughs> um, ESR's newest project and open hardware open source get this UPS um, last month mm-hmm. Eric S. Raymond complained about his choices for UPS that's uninterruptible you're going to get electrocuted when you try to make that. I'm just making that up uh, there's a whole category begs to be disrupted by an open hardware and open source design so he is definitely l- looking marketplace and it's like, okay we need to put together a project like a serious project, figure out the batteries, you know, get documentation and uh, feature sets, which they are starting. Yep. Come they on. have already have a wiki going on. They have a documentation uh, that's been started. They, they basically was the biggest disappointment uh, with this project. It's like, oh, okay. So they're actually starting this the right way Mm -hmm. the get the documentation get people together get people with expertise to like kick in their opinions or contribute if they can get all of that going before they actually starting putting together uh, before they actually start putting together a prototype and that that's no fun i want i wanted them to just go in and zap themselves in conscious three or four times before they learned what they were doing wrong. For all the wrong reasons, I agree with you. Uh, yeah. One of the things I'm thinking about is like, where exactly is this targeted? Because you're not going to be able to pull this off in the enterprise where this would really be useful in the enterprise when you could walk in and say, hey, man, we have a completely open and not necessarily for, you know, Bob, the IT guy mm-hmm. to build, but for another company to make these in mass and say, hey, man, the hardware is completely open. You don't have to worry about anything. I could see that home user, I I would feel fine putting something like this together. Somebody currently in the market to try to be adult and responsible and mm-hmm. buy a big UPS for the studio down here to keep us up and going. Still hasn't happened yet. I'm working <laughs> on it, guys. Don't worry. Uh, but uh, he wants the UPS to provide you know, some useful, I guess you could say, functionality, like yep. text-based alarm messages rather than you know, flashes and that ear pierce, you know, the first thing you do with the UPS (laughs) is you take off the shell and you clip the speaker. I don't know about you. I do that. Um, you know, decent monitoring over USB. Uh, yeah, we've got Eric Baskin leading the hardware project, Jay Mannard. He's doing the firmware, Jerry Mitz doing the copy editing and the documentation. Mm -hmm. And they've decided that they're going to be using lithium ion phosphate batteries. Hashtag blam, baby. I love it. When people, play with well, when they cook with evil gas man just good to see something i'm definitely going to be following mostly for the right reasons now this show is brought to you uh through the scandinavian witchcraftery known as open broadcaster studio plus mm-hmm. five years of learning how to set stuff up and make it do things that it's not supposed to um it, it lets us do some neat mm-hmm. things one thing I discovered now, Pedro, I, I don't know if I knew this or I just assumed that there was always a way to go from your Android based mobile device 
and kind of stream, if not directly to OBS, but the, like a reach around. Some, uh, yeah, some mobile devices have the uh, the functionality. If you put them in PTP mode, mm-hmm. uh, they will uh, your computer will see it as a webcam type of device, and it can do live video from it. Most, however, do not. So if you have, say, a phone with a really good camera, but you can't use it because it doesn't support that functionality, well, there's an app for it, literally. It's uh, IP cam. And uh, this uh, little uh, article from Steemit uh, tells you how to use the IP camera and uh, just tell uh, oh, yes. Dude, this is like that. three steps. You download the app, yeah. you get the IP, you get the <laughs> port number, you can figure that on your router if you wanted to do it internally, or you just, you know, set the port yeah. forwarding if you want to do it like that. <laughs> Open up OPS, like, hey, man, create a new source, give it the IP, wait a few seconds, Bob's your uncle. And yeah, step four, profit, man. Don't ask what we did with the underpants. Um, <laughs> that That's stupid frighteningly simple and all i'm thinking is Mm -hmm. taking half decent android cameras uh, because you can buy little shoulder rigs and bluetooth or wired mics with noise rejection i mean we would genuinely be able to do like live on site like hey live from scale next year like live stream and set that up as a source so we could cut to it do interviews and stuff like that yeah, no, it is uh, actually surprisingly easy, but it's it's an IP cam. You're still, if you're just doing this for local stuff, don't. Uh, you still have the network delay. Even if you have a really good network, it's still going to be noticeable. Uh, so yeah, use this for that one specific application that you really need that network connection. And you can have a remote IP cam. Just boop it into OBS, done. There you go. And I mean, the tech's getting a lot better. Like my ring doorbell that I have in the front of the house. <laughs> yeah. It's like maybe two seconds before it kicks in. And <laughs> I'm, I'm highballing that. Like if you hit the ding thing, it get, po- immediately pops up. Yeah. So, and it's just not. Yeah, bad. no, the network nowadays, uh, the delay isn't all that bad. But if you're looking at yourself at a camera, that's going over the network and then to your PC Andrew, don't and you, then showing it back to you. It's noticeable. You can get rid of that. There, don't you know the trick to get rid of that? Uh, getting drunk. Oh, you close your eyes. <laughs> okay. Noob. <laughs> I was just going to go with getting drunk. Yeah. Introduce All that right. delay. Ghostery tool for web privacy goes open source. It's out unlocking the browser's extension underpinnings could attract outside improvements and dispel the Ooga Booga conspiracy theories about data. You they've kind of switched over and they're yeah. like, Hey man, we're giving this out for free, which they previously previously were and like, we're going to use a little bit of your data and all that to kind of pay the bills. Mm-hmm. They were uh ghostry has been acquired by uh clicks and uh, which Firefox uh, is an investor. So not hundred yep. percent evil, but their idea is like, Hey man, if we open the hood on this and let everybody take a look, they, they will calm their collective memories and maybe, maybe start using it. And I, I listen, a lot of people still use ghostry. However, I think a gang of people, especially people listening to this show, probably, probably use privacy badger from the EFF. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Pri- uh, privacy badger is actually something you just should have installed because we live in the day and age of tracking cookies everywhere so yeah use privacy badger now that uh what is ghostery Mm -hmm. is uh open sauce yeah maybe give it a look well it's good Uh, it's good to have two options man or a couple of options and you know people they say that they're not uh going to peg their roadmap as it were to mysterious contributions from the community so mm-hmm. they're still going to actively develop it themselves but if you want to help it's open source it's there I, I think that makes me especially when you're dealing with stuff like that mm-hmm. you do feel a little bit better when you can peek under the hood and take a look at everything so i say good on them and uh i will uh, fully support that and continue <laughs> using the badger because mushrooms yep <laughs> All right, before we get and, done. Uh, 
the big one, I guess. Well, the one that affects us all here at Linux Gamecast Weekly. The NVIDIA drivers, yes! There's finally an update. Now it just needs to land on the PPAs. It's 30, uh, 390.42. It's the answer to everything, all of our problems, all of our issues. No, it isn't. They, uh, the changelog, NVIDIA has always been a bit scarce in their changelogs. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been eating cashews again? <laughs> That's a word. Uh, but um, the, the only thing that they have... And the uh, release highlights for this one is fix the regression introduced in 390.12. That's not entirely true. Uh, that caused occasional flicker when using X driver's composition pipeline, for example, when using screen transformations Wait, like yeah, rotation. Yeah, I for... take that. You, you can't see what I'm doing here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> t- 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 just tap the bricks on the um, occasional because I, I saw Aaron write that in the dev forums. It's like, what, what moon universe is like six pages? In just one thread out of like the nine on this exact topic, it's like occasional. There's no occasional mm-hmm. flickering. This is a constant. This has been a problem well over a month. Well over a month. I yeah, well over a month on Linux. Mm-hmm. On Windows, it's been months that people have been having issues very similar to this one. <laughs> and there's still issues, like things that have come back. Now, I've not tried this because... This is the production box and things like, oh, let's just throw on drivers unless like I'll probably try it after the show today because I have until Saturday to get everything back up Mm -hmm. and running and which it would never take that long, but it's called being um, overly cautious (laughs) and hopefully it'll fix because so I can get to the 415 kernel and start testing out some um, new trick or treats on that. But yeah, the flickering issue is definitely real. The Blank login screen with XFCE4. That's a fun adventure where you have to drop to a TTY yeah. and back into X, then it pops up. Hopefully they fix that. Hopefully they fix the heart stopping monitor timeout on DisplayPort because the only thing you think when your UHD monitor just poofs on you randomly is like, <laughs> yeah, that's out of warranty. Um, it's always fun. At least they managed to stop it from screaming at me, which was, <laughs> I guess that's an improvement. Hopefully that's going to be fixed. Um, Pedro, am I alone? This is another thing. Maybe some people can write us back on is like, okay, my laptop runs Fedora. My server mm-hmm. home server runs CentOS. Yeah. Now I don't really bother with the video card, even though it's got an NVIDIA, what is it like a 450 or 480 in the home server? And, but even with Fedora for ever, new NVIDIA, all right, and start run level three, derp to derp, uh, CH mod, start run, run it, done, reboot, peace. Flawless. It's been like yeah. that for, since a long, long ago. <laughs> I don't do, you know, not, not on Kubuntu. It's, you don't know what you're up for, man. It's like, all right, let's kill light DM. Let's uninstall these particular NVIDIA packages. Cause if you don't, you're going to have a fun time and, yeah. uh, you know, CUDA Vulcan and all that reinstall it. Hope it gets the sim links, right? Cross mm-hmm. your fingers and maybe it'll read your X org file or not. Uh, that's always the thing. So am I alone in thinking it'd be a really handy dandy nifty idea to have a little auto magic, script pack that would just take that run and poop out some dev files for easy updating? Uh, I think if they don't have them right now, they used to have an option that you could use the run file to build the dev files. You just need to have the uh, dev file building kitchen sink installed. Uh, But that that option used to be there. It probably still is. I never used it. But if you've never installed the uh, proprietary drivers through the Ubuntu repos or the graphics drivers PPA, Mm -hmm. you can just use the run files. I did that for a long time. But then I I figured, yeah, if I'm waiting for the run files for other people to test the run files beforehand, before I install them myself, I'll just run the PPA because it's easier. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. I've been using the PPA (laughs) since... Before it was taken over or it became official with Kubuntu back back in my day, it was the Xorg Edgers, mm-hmm. the PPA for the updated uh, yeah. NVIDIA drivers. But we were talking about this yesterday during Meet the Freemans. It's like, is this community? If it's a volunteer effort, man, I have no right to say anything. If it's not, I'll say this. 
it runs a little bit behind because it, if you if you get the updated drivers like a, a real release within a week, mm-hmm. you're doing good. You're doing good. So that's a thing. I man. think it's community, but then again, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that uh, that about wraps us up. So how about we thank some people? Some nope. lovely, lovely people. Mm-mm. The, 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 nope. the, the people have spoken. And I quit. Somebody might find out I listen to this horrible show. They'll make fun of me and mock me for my poor choice in podcast and entertainment. But hey, if you would like to uh, wave your uh, poor choice of podcast and entertainment flag, like you just don't care, mix those metaphors, old man, then um, head over to LinuxTeamCast.com forward slash support. You can find a bunch of ways to support us through Patreon. We have awesome people who are blowing us up using our Amazon affiliate links. Uh, I think it was Katana just bought a Ryzen system with those. We got a wish list. uh, It's full of just party paraphernalia. I mean, 100% like boring office stuff like power supplies, microphones, headphones. I mean, stuff that is critical to the operation. Uh, 24 by 36 Nicolas Cage posters. Um, Yes. (laughs) And uh, yeah. Hey, man, don't you judge me. Uh, Look, you get that one that goes on the wall behind Fen, and it'll be there. You know you did that. I do want to thank everyone um, shopping through our <laughs> humble links, though, man. That's awesome. The, the awesome thing is that we've raised over $100. You guys have raised over $100 for charity doing that. We get a new egg thing. Uh, PayPal, if you're like, screw all this. Or maybe you're just like, hey, man, I don't like you guys. But I enjoy, maybe you hate watches. So the monetary mm-hmm. thing, you know, keeping us commercial free. is like, that's something I think. Share the show. That'd be cool. Uh, we do want to thank our latest patron because once you're a patron, you're they're kind of our boss. They're like our little mini bosses that unfortunately yeah. they, they get together sometimes and make us do things against our will. <laughs> they do. And mini Jack uh, joined the ranks of the lovely, lovely people uh, who back us on Patreon. So thank you, uh, mini Jack. Uh, yeah, it's uh it's the best way that you can support the show, and you also get to participate in our little uh, general disarraisin. Disarraisin, yes. Disarraisin. That's still funny. Disarraisin. <laughs> On Discord, yes. Uh, you get to join everyone else, and hey, if we're playing some Vigi games live and you want to join us, you have priority, because you're giving us money. Well, oh, geez, man, you're gonna let me, you're gonna let me forget this. There we go. Here, here's the Pedro give penguin. us money penguin. This is Pedro just thinks about the money, man. I don't know. I'm more about the community, but also like people to pay our bills. Uh, yes, we're gonna be lighting up some things on Friday. If you didn't catch the drift, at the end of this month, we're gonna be bringing Jill on just to mm-hmm. kind of like start sucking a little bit of her soul out and get her ready for the uh, regular weekly stuff. But we're gonna get a full full report on the adventures in the land of scale expo and what the LA Linux chicks were up to. And that went on this week. We even sent our only one and begotten leprechaun all the way to LA yes. to experience this. So um looking forward to that. What do we got? Uh, not next week, but the week after next, we'll stick yep. that business together. Pedro, it is pie day 3.1 nom, right? Yep, 3.1 all the noms oh, plus snap. because there's a new pie. Oh yes. There's a new pie in town. It's the new 3B plus. And yeah, it's it's a Raspberry Pi release uh with slightly improved hardware of and we'll get to the details in a moment. The big one for me was the uh Pixie network booting. That's Something that was kind of missing from uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 and the um, the ones before yeah, it, because man, they didn't really support pixie you, footing. Most of you were listening. So most of you were listening, it. and I'm, I'm going it's to... It's here. I'm, it's available. And it's got new processor. Yeah, there it is. Um, hey, Pedro. Better la- wireless LAN. Yeah, that music is really disconcerting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But it's uh it's a new Raspberry Pi three plus uh, three B plus. All right. Wow, that music is messing with my brain so much. <laughs> you see, ladies and gentlemen, I've discovered that Chrome is routed to Pedro in a way 
to where <laughs> none of us it's can really hear it. Loud. It's just it's him. really loud. <laughs> it's not playing right now. He's actually being cray cray at this point. No, it's not playing right now, but it was really loud. Mm. <laughs> I'm just saying for those of you at home, um, they, they kind of went oh, a little apple tosh with that pie video. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't know if you really want to do that. And I, I don't want to associate those two brands because those, those are very much against each other. But okay, what do we got out of the box and proof compatibility for network booting? Pedro mentioned that. That's great. Power over Ethernet, that's also good. Processor speed has increased from 1.2 to 1.4. Faster is better. Dual band wireless uh, LAN chip. So what do we got? 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Yep. That's kind of like, well, I hope we're living in the future. Um, Blue teeth, 2.4 LE. That's neat. Faster onboard Ethernet. So they're going to be, uh, that's going over the USB 2.0 port protocol. So what are we looking at there? Three, 400 megs? Rough thereabouts, yep. which is better yep. considering like the original one was like 60 megabits. Um, yeah, <laughs> that would be your gigabit ethernet. So that's a nice upgrade. Uh, storage networks share that same bus. So you're not going to be getting gigabit speed and yeah. with more speed comes great responsibility. I mean, <laughs> this thing is a blowtorch, Pedro. I mean, it, it, you, you want, you want to keep it cool because this thing runs warm. Get this. Oh yeah. I mean, if you slam the Pi B plus at full tilt, mm-hmm. this thing pushes over five and a half watts, man. Ooh, that uh, that's uh, almost as high as my cheapo Lenovo idols. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it's. I thought maybe you could head over to like uh, on Reddit or Things for Ants and see if you could commission a. Hyper 212, like the little babby one. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> you probably can. You probably could. Every, uh, there's a lot of 3D printers floating around right now. You probably can. <laughs> but hey, man, I mean, they got just being our show notes. They've uh, went through and just straight up benchmark this thing against everything from the original Model A to the most recent Model mm-hmm. 3B and, you know, Pi Zero and everything. Yeah, you can definitely see the Ethernet throughput. So we're looking at, let's see, Model B, a 3B plus. Yeah, you're going from 60 to 212.9. So Yep, but it's still over the uh, the same bus. So you're sharing your SD storage, SD card storage, or if you have one of those SATA uh, adapters for the GPIO pins, that'll also use the exact same uh, bus. So network and storage, they're sharing that bus. It's probably a single PCIe lane, if that. So you're not going to get the uh, the gigabit per second, but you're going to come close. Now, uh, I have a interesting question, which could also be a possible future Pepsi challenge for one of us. Okay. Is the Pi B, Pi 3B plus dash NCC 170, whatever, the new one. Um, yeah. Are we at the point where you could get away using it as a desktop? For light use. Uh, for light use, yes. I, I don't know how for many mental Chromebook gymnastics. Use, yes. Yeah, Chromebook. <laughs> yeah, right. For like Chromebook use without the uh, Android uh, app out of the box support, mm-hmm. yes. Hmm. I'm willing to say yes. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll see. For that price. Yeah, I haven't bought a pie in the last two generations. Pie, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll pick one up and poke it with a stick. Maybe I'll send it to Space Tanzania and to someone who uses them for actual desktops. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, man, I'm sure we got some stuff wrong, a gang of stuff wrong, or maybe our opinions were just wrong because you know opinions, they're wrong, and that's that, that's how it works. Maybe we got something right. Maybe you have a question, a thought, hint, allegation, or just something Probably better left unsaid, but you know what? You can tell us. You can tell old man then. This is just between me and you. How can they do that? 
Well, uh, they can do that a multitude of different ways, but the way that you're guaranteed to have your question featured right here, right now, is go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, make sure to pick LWDW, or Relationship Advice, if you'd like Jordan to help you with your relationship. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, pick LWDW from the little drop down thing, and we'll know that you're throwing some feedback for this very show right here. Like Vin said, maybe we got something wrong. Maybe we got something right. Maybe you you just don't like our face listen man it's a safe bet to say we got something wrong wronger because <laughs> we're just regular ordinary Probably. people then it's like hey man this Linux thing is cool let's talk about it on wednesday and then that immediately means quit talking like you know what you're saying it's like man i'm just talking <laughs> I, I, nobody forcing you to watch this no this is we're not talking about a one of the best nicholas cage movies hashtag one true god um this comes from I'm Tim. A, Tim. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he writes, obviously, the LGC LWDW YouTube channel needs a disclaimer, such as 99% of seasoned LGC victims avoid watching on the YouTubes due to risk of prolonged exposure to Pe- Pedro's face. Mm-hmm. Ple- maybe this is another warning. Please only watch from a safe non-graphical environment, e.g., Correct use of EG. All right, I'll give you that, Time or Tim. Good. <laughs> a lot of people use IE, and I, grammar Nazi irritates me. Links, YouTube DL, or MVP. Make sure we get none of the revenue. Or it got you. Yes. Um, also, <laughs> very much, look, a little Russian there, also very much looking forward to Vin breaking Mate 1.20 in new and interesting ways. Cheers, guys. Tim Tams. I mean, he's got a point with your your face. face. (laughs) I mean. Look, I know I'm not the prettiest thing to look at. Uh, I haven't broken any mirrors in years, so I guess puberty did something good for me, at least. So, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You're just going to drink these. (laughs) Do you agree with Tim? Would you say my face is uh, the stuff of nightmares? Say what? Would you say my face is the stuff of nightmares? See, I don't really see you anymore. You're just like this blob. Hi. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> yeah, man, you're pretty horrifying to look at. I'll, I'll give him that. Okay, so, uh, well, t- if you disagree with team, uh, Tim. Tim, time. There I go with team again. Uh, Tim, time, Tim. Uh, yeah. Tim, Tim. Um, yes, leave us a comment. Leave us some feedback. Let us know what you think of my face, because my ego would very much enjoy that, to be honest. Oh, no. Uh, again, this is another one of my uh, brilliant solutions. I forget. I was like, oh, the video's too dark, or there were screen tests. Like, oh, again, 90% of your problems can be solved by closing your eyes. <laughs> yeah. I, I forget. Uh, boom. It's been a couple of years back. Somebody wrote in, and uh, I'll, I'll tell the story. Let, let's let's roll the credits so we can show off all the beautiful party patrons where we get out of here, and I'll, t- I'll tell the story. Boom. Yes. Um, it's like, okay, I've been listening to the podcast. It was like a year or two in when we were doing this. Mm-hmm. And like, all right, uh, I thought I thought you would be like just a little bigger, I guess. <laughs> and... They thought Jordan was going to be what's his name, the guy from the movies, Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen. He's like, yeah, he kind of looks like a little bit with curly hair. He's like, yeah, you look exactly like I thought you were going to look. <laughs> I, 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 I don't care. I'm taking that as a compliment. I don't care how you meant it. <laughs> Boom. Dynafire. We love you.